Sandy as old back at with another card fight vanguard overdress video. So hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And let's get this one started. Today's video is very special. It is how to upgrade your overdress start decks on a budget. So as you know, Car Fight Vanguard Overdress is just about to hit the states with its first booster set with DBT01, where pretty much you can get all five decks, all trial deck, all five trial deck support, and you can get five new decks as well. So today we're gonna figure out how you're gonna upgrade your Overdress start decks when you're on a budget. So for the budget that we're gonna take today, it's gonna be basically my budget of sixty dollars, and we're gonna see how one would go about turning their overdress start deck into something better while not being able to get exactly the best cards. So let's go. First up, uh, let's just go over the trial deck amount. We're gonna go for each one. So first up, we've got Yu Kondo for Holy Dragon. It's the Dragon Empire trial deck, as you know. It has basically four Nirvana, four Rio, four Rona, Reno, and then you can see the rest. The importance of this deck basically is to um, is to use the overdress mechanic and make one unit stronger by putting Varina on top of Trickstar. It makes it stronger, it makes it a 20k swinger. How many attacks you typically can get in a turn with Nirvana trial deck? I would say you would not normally call more than two units down. One of them would be the Vanguard and then one of them would be Varina. I mean, if you have another Varina in hand and you have another Trickstar to overdress it with, then by all means do it. But otherwise, you normally get two, and sometimes on rare occasions, three attacks with pretty big numbers, forcing out a lot of guards. I would say roughly, like on first Vanguard Swing, you can force out a 15k guard on the Vanguard and then a 20k guard on one of the Varinas. So that's pretty good, followed by a Persona Riot that forces out 30 and 25. So it's always helpful to have those big push numbers. And how the deck kind of plays, it's more or less a tempo based deck to where you kind of wait for your opponent to make a move and then you force them out all the way you can. I mean, most of the time you play this trial deck very aggressively, but I do say that this deck is more of a tempo when it's just the trial deck alone. And the main units are obviously just Nirvana and Verena when you're just talking about the trial deck. So obviously we don't have much to work with considering that half the trial deck is basically useless and everything else is just more or less filler for searching out Verena and nothing else. So how would you go about upgrading this deck on a $60 budget? So. What you would add is something like Varina Arcus. If you don't know what it does, it is a another version of Varina where when it's overdressed, you can counterblast one to draw two and gain plus 5k power, bringing it to a 15k swinger. I personally don't like Varina Arcus. I only don't like it because unlike regular Varina, it's a 15k on place, and then after that, it's a 10k vanilla, while Varina is a constant 20k swinger. And that's the only reason why I don't like Arcus. I like its draw two ability. I don't mind that it's a counter blast. I just hate that it's a vanilla afterwards, which is why it doesn't do much when you're not using Verena Violante with it, because that's normally what you would do. You just overdress it on top of that, and then it would still serve its purpose. But Verena Arc still does well in this deck, especially when you're going with the rest strategy. Like when I was playing some test battles earlier with all these decks, I can tell you Verena Arcs definitely helped because I played this deck very aggressively and Verena Arcs just gave me the hand cards to do it. It let me draw into more attackers, it let me draw into more boosters, and I just forced my way down on one. So Verena Arcus is a really good card to add, four copies I would say. Extreme Dragon Velocity Hazard, that is also a pretty good card. Also Verena Arcs is about $5 for the record. I'm getting all these prices from TCG players, so if you're going somewhere else this video does not apply to you. Anyways, um... Extreme Dragon Veloso Hazard is about 25 cents. It is just a standard when it boosts, it gets plus 2k power, bringing it to a 10k booster as a grade one. That's really helpful. That basically guarantees whatever it's boosting is a 10k drop for an extra guard. So that's helpful. You can boost it with Nirvana and then use Nirvana skill, bringing it to 33, forcing out a 25k guard for just a one to pass. Varina combined with Nirvana combined with this thing swings for 40k. So that's dropping out roughly like a 30k guard or if they're at grade 2 that's 35k guard just to block that attack so Velasa Hazard really does a lot for just being a 2k booster so I definitely say a 4 because he's useful Twin Buckler Dragon is just like the new style PG where it has the claws if you have two if you have one or less cards in your hand when you're using it when it's placed in guard circle you don't have to discard for its PG cost which is really good obviously you want to add the over trigger because the trial deck over trigger does not do that much here the trial deck over trigger, if you're wondering, it's in all of them. It's when you drive check it, just like most over triggers, you give a plus one million to something. 
or whenever you damage check it or drive check it, you give plus one million to something. Then you remove from game and draw a card. Then if you drive check it, it gets an additional effect, and that additional effect to something else gets a million. So two units to get a million. That sounds pretty good, but in Nirvana, you kind of don't want to do that, considering the only things you're going to be calling are Varinas, and they already get enough power as is, so you don't need to like put more one millions on them. Having Dragon Deity of Resurgence Drag Veda, on the other hand, is better because it lets your Vanguard restand. Nirvana's skill is not once per turn with the Counter Blast 1 and add plus 10k to units, so that's really helpful. And we would add more crits, Conduct Spark Dragon. I'm not one for adding crits from like, or triggers in general from different ride lines. I mean, granted, technically Conduct Spark isn't a part of the Eugene ride line, but I consider it a part of the Eugene ride line since it came out with Eugene. So I'm against putting this in my personal decks, but this does actually work. It makes the deck a lot more aggressive. It definitely puts on more crit pressure. It's always just helpful to have more crit pressure, honestly. And then finally, you would add Burn Bright Pure Prayers. A lot of people say you don't need it in Ravana because the deck doesn't need shield or like the deck has enough shield already. And to some extent that's true, but with this version, because you're going like on a budget, I suggest that you put it in because you go very aggressive, like you do not mess around. You call out your entire hand, rush them down, push them, and use PG's pure bright and a few triggers to defend yourself with. And then after that, you just use everything else to attack with. So I suggest doing that. What you would remove for these cards is stuff like Fire Slash, Dragon, Inferno Sword. If you don't know what this thing does, it is a grade 3 with Persona Right because they give Persona Right to everything, with a 13k base, and when it attacks, it gets plus 2k to end of battle. So it's a 15k swing. So the only time this card is remotely useful is if you're playing against Token Rambu, where they have the one grade 3 that gets plus 2k if your opponent has no back row, or if they're at grade 2. Otherwise, this thing has no purpose in existing. There is no reason why this should be in the trial deck. I don't know why they give us this when literally every other set got something better, but we got this. I guess it's fine because it's the main character deck, so it's going to get the better support. So obviously remove this. Iron Ball Dragon Ankle Bowler is another card you want to remove because it's just an 8k vanilla with 5k shield. Like Back in V-Series, we would actually get a benefit from them being a vanilla. Either they would get more power, they would get more shield, but here it's just... No, we don't get any form of benefit, so no to Anko Baller once you get your upgrades. Escort Drag, Stealth Dragon, Hayashi Kaze. This is a option if you want. You can choose to either keep this and get one copy of Arena Valiente if you really want it, or you can choose to just take the Twin Buckler instead and not get Arena Valiente, because I'm telling you right now, this deck doesn't have Arena Valiente. If you want it, pick this over Twin Buckler, but if you want like more consistent consistency and bigger bang for the buck, get Twin Buckler. Uh, Spiritual King of Determination, Obari, that's the over trigger from the trial deck, which just gives a million to another unit when you drive check it. And finally, Blaze Fist Monk Nico, because you don't need fronts in this deck. Like I said before, the most you're gonna call is like a Varina to the front row, unless you're going like really early on rush, like I said, but normally you don't need fronts for that either. So Nico's just not needed, no amount of fronts are needed. What the final deck list should look like is about four Nirvanas, which allows you to discard a card from your hand and search your deck for a grade, search your drop zone for a grade zero and call it to rear. So that's normally how you recycle your trick stars. I'm probably the only person in the world who recycles actual grade zeros with it, like the sunrise egg, the draw trigger, the critical triggers, the heal triggers. I'm probably the only person that does that because I just like calling them back. Uh, Ryu, you don't really want that many of in the main deck you don't want any of it in the main deck because your grade two lineup is mostly popularized by varina arcs and varina in fact those are your only grade twos and those are the only grade twos that you need so i say you only need the one and that's the one that goes in the ride deck reno i say you need three it's just an on attack it gets plus two but that's still really good for an early rush for like when you don't want your opponent to nuke your vela hazards and it acts as like a discard fodder for the pgs nirvana or the ride deck skill it also searches for Trickstar when Rotopon by Ryu, and Ryu searches for uh, Sunrise, I mean not Sunrise, Verena when Rotopon by Nirvana by Soul Blasting one. Um, Sunrise X is just the standard you get to draw a card. I say about four arcs. Like I said personally, I wouldn't run arcs because I just don't like the fact that it's a vanilla after it's placed. But it's still a good card because it gets you those two, and in a very aggressive deck like this one, I'd say that you need those two cards. And that 5k power really does help for like the push on the grade 2 turn. 
Verena, like I said before, it's a 20k swinger, and if you Soul Blast 2 when it's attacking the Vanguard, it nukes an opponent's rear guard. So that's really helpful to have. Uh, Vilio Sai Hazard, that is a, just a 10k booster. Really helpful because it helps hit Verena bigger, it helps Nirvana hit bigger, it helps your little rush turns hit bigger, and, and plus it's a benefit for calling them down early because then they have to waste attack on those so like you can save up your counter blast or like kind of stay at low damage so that you can take bigger attacks later on. So it's a really helpful card to have. So I say four of, four Twin Buckler, obviously, four Trickstar because this deck falls apart without Trickstar. And if you don't know what it does, it's a 5k grade zero that is just it cannot be chosen by effects so it gets screwed over so it screws over prison it screws over eugene to some extent it screws over prison more than it screws over eugene but still we have devada as our over trigger we have four heals three draws four seven crit and for order wise we have two blitz order of burn bright pure prayers which if you're at three or more damage acts as a 15k guard for one unit and Sunburst Evolution, which you would run at three, and if you don't know what that does, you Counter Blast one, pick a Verena from your drop zone, just a regular Verena, add it to hand, and give a unit plus 5k to end of turn. So a lot of people don't run Sunburst Evolution. I like to run it because it lets you recycle your Verenas a lot. I'm telling you right now, if I didn't run Sunburst Evolution, I would have lost about half the games that I've ever played with Verena in general. Counting my personal build and counting this, if I didn't run Sunburst, I would not have won the same amount of matches I have because I always lose Verena really early on and then when it ends up in drop, that 5k that I'm giving to something actually comes back to help me along with getting another overdress unit. So I say 3 up for it. And finally, what does like the deck do when it's in its final form? It still focuses on the overdress mechanic making one unit stronger. You still on the average of 2 to 3 big attacks. It is now an aggro and tempo based deck where you can just go full out early on and not minus too much from it and it's still pretty well tempo based because if you don't want to do that like say your opponent's playing prison there are cases where you don't want to do that you could just play slowly and you can do what i did one time and then just overdress constantly i mean you can do the trip three trick star back row thing where they can't touch them and then they can't do anything to you but i don't like doing that because i just find that really boring so you can just overdress into arcs or overdress to varina slowly push them to death and then they keep taking your stuff, you keep using your counter blast on power gaining and taking back the units and your soul blast as well. And never use Verena skill, by the way. And then you eventually just rush them down with that. So that's basically what the final deck does. And then what its main units are is still Nirvana and Verena, but now we have Verena Arcs and Vilia Hazard. So now we have more ways to like abuse the opponent. And just in case they lock down our Verena, we still have Verena Arcs and Vilia Hazard to boost up units. And that was Dragon Empire. The final price for this, assuming that you already have the Dragon Empire trial deck, then it is $45.44. For me, shipping is normally like $5 extra, so for me, this comes to $49. I don't know about you guys, but this comes to me for $49, basically. So pretty good. This is what all the cards look like, so if you're wondering what they should look like, there you go. Also, don't pick that art of Nirvana because that art is a DSR, I believe, and that thing is really expensive. I don't suggest you pick that because if you have the trial deck, you already have four enough already. But if you really want to get that art, you can. I just like that art so much. Next up, we have D Stark Deck 02, Donji Moyami Tyrant Tiger. I probably said his name wrong. I don't care. So this deck pretty much focuses on the final rush mechanic. Here is pretty much the overrun of the start deck. You get four Bruce, four Richard, four Steve, one Matt, and that's pretty much your ride line. You get a good amount of soul charging, and you get to, I guess, hit really easily. So what does the deck do in general? So Final Rush, if you don't know what that does, it activates at the start of your ride phase when you're on Bruce. So you have to wait till turn four, and then afterwards it activates a, power, a lot of powerful effects. You can hit five attacks with magic numbers, forcing out at least 15k guards, on the average, like that's a lot of shield to go out easily with Bruce, especially when you persona right into it. Then it's kind of like a tempo based deck. You don't rush early on with the trial deck. You normally, the most you call is maybe one unit down during the entirety of it before, and not counting like the unit that you call with uh, Matt skill by 
I mean, not bat, Matt, Steve skill by calling back Matt and soul charging one. You normally just call one unit from hand, then you just swing with bruise and that maybe that one unit, and then you normally wait till turn four where you go into final rush, and that's when you like go in all out and kill your opponent in one go. The main units here are just violence bruise because if you can see, he activates final rush, and when he attacks, if you are in final rush, soul blast five and stand all of your front row units uh, activating the five attack loop. Then we got Anger Richard, who basically gets 5k power when you're in Final Rush, and Bad Steve, who does the same thing. So we got a 13k booster and a 15k swinger. What would you add to a deck like this? So, you know, we would add cards like Upward Acrobat Marargy. So her skill, basically, she's a great through with Persona Red as well in 13k base. When it attacks, you can, if you're in Final Rush, you can put a Rear Guard to Soul, another Rear Guard to Soul, that is. You draw a card and you get a Soul Charge out of it, and for the turn, she gets plus 10. So that's good. She's a 23k swinger permanently for the turn. So when she restands later, she's still a 23k swinger. And granted, that's a once per turn ability, but that's a 15k drop on its own for two attacks, which means a total of 30k guard. And that's not counting Persona Ride. If you did Persona Ride, that's 33k swing. So 25k guard per attack. And then she just lets you get two soul charges out of it and she lets you draw. She's a really good card. I suggest four copies of her because she's only like $2 a piece. Electro Spartan, I don't like running this card personally because it's from the Barrel Magnus ride line, and I don't like combining ride lines. I don't like combining a lot of things together, and it's not because I don't think they're good. I admit that they're good. I just feel uncomfortable doing it, but Electro Spartan, because this is a budget deck, this would fit really well with it. I'd say like two copies because, granted, half its ability is useless because you don't have Barrel Magnus in the deck itself, but when it's placed on rear, Counter Blast 1, Soul Charge 2. Really easy. Bruce takes five soul blasts, and in this deck, it you can't soul charge as well, easily as you would in a non-budget deck. Actually, that's a lie because this deck soul charges the exact same amount. But having that Electro Spartan is helpful because it just gets you more soul a lot easier. And this deck does not counter blast as much, especially because it isn't a non, especially because it is a non-budget deck is why it doesn't counter blast as much. So having that free counter blast to soul charge too is really helpful. I say about two Electro Spartans. I say for Protobulb, Protobulb is this amazing grade 1 AK base on attack or boost if you are in final rush, counter blast 1, put any unit you want into the soul, and if you do, you get to search your soul and take any card from there and put into your hand. So you can take a Bruce, you can constantly do Persona Rides, you can take a PG, you can take an Over Trigger if you soul charged it earlier, you can take any card you need from your soul, put it back into your hand. And then boom, you're good. And I really like Proto Bowl for that. It's just a card that can get you any resources. And it's not a once per turn, unlike Marjorie. So if you want, you can put this in the front row, and as long as you have the counter boss for it, you can restand it twice. I mean restand it and use this ability twice. So you clear up your field. So if you're playing against prison, your opponent can't do anything against you. And you can get two cards out of it into your hand. So Proto Bulb is a really nice grade one, four copies. I say about four copies of the next grade one too, and I this thing saved me before. Steam Battler Gun Gram in or Gram. So it's an AK based grade one as well with boost, and in the English it has a persona right icon, but that's just a misprint. When it's placed on rear, soul charge one. So that's a free soul charge, that's really good. And then you may soul blast three, and if you do you draw a card. I like that ability. I like that you can soul blast three easily to draw a card because Final Rush, yeah, you can do multiple times, and actually uh, some games it does force you to do Final Rush multiple times, but getting that chance to just pick a draw over the Final Rush may actually be helpful, and getting a Soul Charge just by being placed is really great. Like, I was playing against Prison earlier, and I bricked with Bruce, and when I say I bricked, I mean the only cards I saw in my hand that I could actually call that weren't triggers were Gungram and Bad Steve. But I didn't draw Bad Steve until very late in the game to before to right when I called final turn because it was either I killed him that turn or I died the following turn via deck out. So I just kept calling down Graham and soul charging and soul charging because they kept trying to imprison it and get plus 10k because they couldn't imprison anything else and they just had to Seraph Snow on it to get power and to hit with bigger numbers. And I eventually just got to the point where despite the fact I was just drawing a bunch of triggers, I eventually got to the point where I was stalling them out with Graham alone, and then when we got to the point where I could go find a rush, I almost won because of him. He was able to allow me to stall for so long just because of his Soul Charge 1 and Soul Blast 3 ability. And the only reason why I did lose is because they literally damage checked a heal trigger and then an over trigger in the same turn, but A, sometimes it happens. 
But anyways, he's a really good card. He can have av set up and pay for resources. Four of copy. And then when you know we got our standard PG. It has the same clause as um, Twin Buckler does, where if you have one or less hand cards when you're paying for its cost, you don't have to discard at all. Our Dark States over trigger does something different though. It's the standard one million as all over triggers do with the draw when you remove it, and then if you draft check it, you get an additional effect. And its additional effect is choose one of your vanguards, and for the rest of the game. You get the ability, so even if you ride, you still get this ability. Plus 10k power and plus 1 crit during your turn. So that means you know your Vanguard swinging for 23 and 2 crit when you're at grade 3 every time. And that's really good to have because that always puts on crit pressure. So now they have to guard the Vanguard. And it's like a permanent way of keeping the overtrigger because, yeah, they're worried about the overtrigger being hit. But if you actually do hit your overtrigger as a drive check, now they have to constantly worry about, like, what if you hit more triggers, or what if this does hit because it's a 2 crit already? So it's a really helpful over trigger to have because it puts more pressure on your opponent after you see it. And if you see it really early, yeah, the 100 million kind of sucks to lose, but you're hitting for high critical for like the rest of the game, so your opponent has to constantly be worried about your Vanguard. And then, speaking of crits, we add more crits into this deck. This is probably the one deck I am okay with adding more crits in, and taking out the other triggers solely because the draw trigger in this deck kind of makes you closer to decking out. So I'm fine with putting Flinty Slasher in this because you don't want to deck out during this. And what you would remove, uh, you don't have to remove this card in particular, but I would suggest it. Time Fissuring Fist Colossus. It's a grade 3. When you place it, you soul charge one immediately. And then if you're in a final rush, counter blast one, it gets a 15k. So it's a 28k swinger during the turn is placed if you're in final rush, making it 5k stronger than Morge. Why I would say you run Morge over this is because you get two soul charges out of it and you get a draw. So, and it's not an on play. So as long as it's still on the field, it does something. Which is why I like it a bit more than I like Colossus. But if you want that 5k more, or you can run them both, you can do as you wish. Incline and Izer, this is a 10k vanilla. Replace this. There's no point in running this. Use Electro Sparta in its place. Steam Gunner Brody, he's a, when he intercepts, counterblast one, get plus 5k shield. You know, it's just a 10k shield, and granted, like, that's good, but this deck doesn't need the shield. I have proven that this deck does not need shield if you know what you're doing. If you remotely know what you're doing, you do not need shield for this. So, Brody isn't necessary. Acrobat Presenter, this is a questionable card, because it's just when it boosts, if your Vanguard is Bruce, Soul Charge 1, and then, or if it boosts the boost, I don't remember which one it is exactly. And then if you're in Final Rush, you Soul Charge again. Um, I don't like that. For the sole reason that it's not a cost skill. If you don't know what that means, it's basically, if a skill has a cost, it's optional. If it doesn't have a cost, you have to do it the second you meet the requirements. So when you boost, that's an automatic Soul Charge too that you have no say in, which means it could bring you closer to deck out and possibly end the game for you. Which is why I don't like to use Presenter. If you think that you need that extra soul, I say put Gunning Ram down to 2 and then put back 2 Presenter. But I don't like running it because it risks the chance of me decking myself out really quickly. And finally we have Psychic Prima. Ram to remove. It's just the standard PG. I think Hate Dragon's better than this. Hate Dragon is definitely better than this. And if you're wondering why would you not get the Diablos Boy Eden, he is $14 a copy. Even if you remove all four copies of Risk or Hate Dragon, you will only be able to afford one of them. There is no point in like getting rid of anything else for one copy of a card. And here's what the final deck list would look like. Four copies of Bruce, four copies of Richard, and Richard basically, like I said earlier, gets you 5k power, and when it's placed on ban, put any rear guard to soul and draw a card, and Bad Steve, when it's placed, call a grade zero off from your soul. And if you do, you soul charge one. So you normally use those two in combos to get more soul and more draw. Uh, Margie, as I said, gets you two soul charges and a draw. Spartan, two soul charges. Proto Ball, really good recycler. Gunning Ram, card that saved my life. Risk you'll hate, good PG. Uh, Hades Dragon, deity of resentment. Gallo Mage Held, which is my favorite over trigger of all time, despite its name. My my, you know, and then trigger wise, we run eight crit, a three front, four heal. This deck needs, I feel like it needs more crit than fronts. Like this deck hits really good power on its own. You need more crit pressure just to give to rear guard, just in case you did see your over trigger to van. And finally, we have Brother Soul. Brother Soul is our normal type order. That's a grade one. It's just a simple soul charge two, no cost, no nothing. It's just a free soul charge two, and that's what I like about it. It can 
get you from three soul to five soul really easy so you can already use bruce and here's what the uh final deck would do it still has before with it's a four attack you have to wait to turn four to use final rush and it activates a wave of powerful effects but now activates more effects you get five attacks that hit magic numbers but a lot bigger magic numbers now and it's still like a rush tempo deck well actually no it wasn't a rush deck before rush decking means just Call down the second you get the chance and beat the shit out of the opponent. Like, that's honestly what I was doing earlier when I was playing this deck. Just calling down any unit that I saw. Grade 1 rush. Grade 2 rush. Get to grade 3. Use what I had. Final rush. Your opponent's probably dead at this point. And that's just what you do. You rush them down. Gain the advantage early. And, yeah. Or you could go tempo based if it's something like prison where you gotta wait it out. Or if they have like a deck that has more power than you, like Orphus. Orphus hits good numbers. I would say if you see an Orphus deck, slow it down. Don't go full rush into them. Just be patient and bring them down in one go. And now the main units of the deck are still Bruce, Richard, and Steve. But now we have Marjorie, Protobulb, and Gunning Ram. So yeah. And here's what the final deck looks like. If you want to take an image or like you want to know what the cards look like. And the final price of this, once more, assuming that you actually bought the start deck already, which is $5, is $51.73. For me, this would be about $56 if we were to take shipping into account. Okay. Next deck we have is D Star Deco 3 Toyo Ibata Apex Ruler. So for our main cards here, for the trial deck anyways, we have Apex Ruler Bastion, who is a grade 3 with... 13,000 powers per usual. It has a continuous ability where during your turn each of your grade two Each of your grade three units get plus 2k power So this becomes a 15 all of your grade threes become 15 which is really helpful because that means all of your units are swinging for 30k and Or not 30k well 30k if they have boosters which we'll get to in a second while our grade two of the ride line is rooks who allows us to add 5k power to him if we have three or more grade three units on board and boost and when it's rolled upon by Bastion, you reveal three grade threes from hand to draw a card. Four, when it's rolled upon by Rooks, lets you reveal two grade threes and call the top card of your deck to field. And if it's if a, it's a unit card, and if it's not, it goes to the hand. And finally, if um, it you can pick your Vanguard if it's a grade three and counter blast one, and it gets plus five k power. And Bastion's other skill, which I forgot to mention earlier, is at the end of a drive check. Any drive check doesn't well your drive check. It doesn't matter if it's its own or the rear guards. You can discard a grade, any card from your hand and restand a unit on your board and it gets plus 10k power if you drive check the grade three, which is really helpful because that lets you get more attacks and more power out of it. And now on to like, I guess the, uh, what does the deck do? So what does it do? You grade three everything. Literally everything's a grade three. You get as much grade threes and the field as possible you try to drive check grade threes if you can somehow manipulate your drive checks you restand your rear guards and you give them plus 10 sometimes you don't get to see grade threes i have had days where i just never see grade threes for my drive checks for some ungodly reason but sometimes it just happens but on average you normally get four attacks and sometimes they'll force out 15 to 20k shield depend on average like if you don't have boosters this immediately dropped to like 10k shields and 15, which 15 is still good, but like 10k's and sometimes just 5k shields in general. It's not the best. And this is a full out rush deck. Like, the second you get the chance, call out a bunch of grade threes, rush them down. Main unit wise, we have Apex Ruler Bastion, Vehemet, Witch, Ramana, and Knight of Broadaxe for Fluke. Uh, what they do, I, you already see Bastion up on screen. Vehemet Witch allows you to on attack counter blast one and she gets plus 5k power till end of battle so she's an atk swinger and knight of broad axe refluke you put them to soul and you pick another unit and it gets plus 10k power but you can only pick a rear guard so that's really helpful because it just gives another 10k to something so if you combine it with romana it becomes a along with bastion it becomes a 30k swinger yeah 30k swinger so that's really helpful to have but that's only the trial deck so let's see what we can do to make it better what can we add? We can add cards like Dark Strain Dragon, who, as I mentioned earlier, to an extent, allows you to give boosting abilities to something. By Soul Blasting 2, you can give boosting abilities to 
everyone. That's a great three. And speaking of which, all of these cards that we're adding, except for the PG and the Over Trigger, are great threes. And that's why Bastion is both the easiest deck and hardest deck to build in budget wise, because all Bastion needs is great threes, basically. So some great threes are really expensive and it makes it hard to build the deck. Like, for example, Alden, that is a really good great three, but it's $11 a copy. So if you're trying to stick in your budget, you can't really get a lot of bang for the buck. And Fusato is another example of that where he's $5 a piece, but we still managed to fit him in the budget. So, you know, but in the uh, good news is like, it's so versatile because you can use any great threes you want. Dark Strain basically lets you get boost or something. Actual Analyst Coca Beal only works if your Vanguard is Bastion, where when it's placed on Guard Circle for every two Grade Threes you have, including herself, you get plus 5k shield. So you can place, say for example, your field has one Bastion, one Dark Strain, one Refluke, and then you put Coca Beal into Guard Circle, that's four Grade Three units, so you get a total of 10k shield. So that's helpful to have, and it can stack, so if you just and I'm pretty sure it's a continuous ability too, so you can call down a second Coca Beal to the guard circle and it will add towards the shield value once you, you know, hit more grade 3 numbers. Knight of War Damage Fosado, he is a can't be retired by effects. Or no, sorry, he can't be targeted by effects. So that means he can't be imprisoned, he can't be retired. He's just a really good card to have because he can stop people from taking him. And on hit, you get to counter charge one and soul charge one. That's helpful. This deck does counter blast a decent amount. It does soul blast a lot so having that extra on hit pressure along with if they do take it you get benefits out of it is a really helpful thing next up we have remission sword Fawnel. this is not necessarily my favorite card it's actually tied for my least favorite with vehement witch where counter blast two it gets plus one crit when it attacks if you have three or more grade three units so not the best it does have crit pressure though so you can force out your opponent but it's a counter blast two where it could be better like with Valhamet. Next up, we have Age of Meyer Dragon. It's our standard PG, as with all the other PGs. It's a grade one, and if you have two or less cards, I mean, sorry, one or less card in hand, when you're using its guarding ability, you don't have to discard for it. While you have an over trigger with Light Dragon of Deity, Light Dragon Deity of Honors, our Martino. So I like this card. It's one of my favorite of the over triggers. I believe it goes Gilgamesh, whatever the Dark Shit Trigger Over Trigger is called. Uh, this Over Trigger, because this Over Trigger actually lets you get Rear Guard Drive Checks, which is why Bastion becomes so good, because even if you don't see them on Bastion's Drive Checks, you can see them on Rear Guard Drive Checks. And I like that, so it gives you more potential to do things, and it also gives you more hand cards for your Rear Guards, but the only time I did ever pull this off, my opponent died by Bastion because I saw an Over Trigger and that was enough to hit, unfortunately, but A, it's still good to have. And then for over other over triggers, it goes, this is tied actually with the Stoic over trigger. And we'll get to the, what that one is actually next. And then it goes Brankgate and then it goes Dragon Empire because that's my least favorite over trigger. Next up, we have White Fang, which Dismo, which is basically just a critical trigger. The critical trigger always adds like little support just to force out the opponent when you see them and add more crit pressure, especially with Fauna, who's not the best crit pressure ever. Next up, we have Hopeful Testudo. This is one of my favorite cards. I don't like using Coca Beal much because Coca Beal is a grade 3, and I expect like my grade 3s to have rear guard skills, so having an ability that just only gives me shield from it doesn't help me as much, and I don't like using Coca Beal. In fact, I've only ever used it once, and I don't really like using it. Anyways, Hopeful Testudo allows you to add a, a 15k guard to your. Yeah, a 15k guard basically if you have three or more grade 3 units, and that's really easy to hit with this deck. Like on average, you have Bastion on Vance, so that's one. Sometimes, most of the time, you have Dark Drain in the back row, so that's two. And then, you know, you'll maybe have Fusada or something else, so that's three easily, and then 15k shield. So I really like Helpful to Pseudo. I like it more than I like Kobiel, and it's a Blitz Order, though, so, you know, 50 50 on that. What you would remove for these? First up, Shadow Bow Archer Listena. This is a vanilla. It is not a good vanilla. It's just a 5k, 8k base vanilla. There is no point in running this, immediately get rid of it. Platinum Wolf, I like this card's look. I partially like its skill, but in this deck, like it's not needed at all. If you're wondering what a skill is, it's an 8k base, 5k shield with Soul Blast 2, and it gets plus 5k power, that's a grade one. So, not the best skill, but like, it could honestly be worse. Next up we have Life-Saving Angel Kurabil. 
Uh, this is in the same situation as it was with the Dark States one. If you choose to buy the Alden over this thing, uh, you would have to keep this PG. And honestly, you'll only be able to buy one Alden. So make your choice wisely. Uh, Curry Bell is just like the standard PG. Spiritual King of Determination Obari, like we've said before, is the over trigger. You always want to get rid of that over trigger. Knight of Heavenly Rend Lith is a front trigger. You don't need front triggers here. Your rear guards in the front row hit big enough already. And finally, we have the Hour of Holy Judgment Cometh, the order that comes in the trial deck. I mean, you can keep this if you want, because it's a counterblast 2. You get plus 5k to you, and you draw 2. It's basically what... It's half of Alden skill, which is helpful. If you want to keep it around, you can. Personally, if you keep it around, get rid of Kokobiel. I don't like using Kokobiel. I've never once... Well, okay, that's a lie. I've used Kokobiel once. In my entire time of playing Bastion, both budget and regular. And I use Bastion a decent amount. I have yet to use Kokobiel more than once. And every other time, I either win with Bastion or I lose barely. So, take that as you will. But, yeah, that's normally what you want to remove and what you want to add for Bastion. What the final deck list should look like is about 4 Bastion, 1 Rook, 1 Fort, because you want to maximize the amount of Grade 3s possible. So, having the Works and Forks running around in the main deck doesn't really make sense. 1 Base, which is your starter, which you don't have more than one of anyways. You want about 3 Romana, because she's not the best Grade 3, but she's not the worst Grade 3 either, because she can still get more power if you need it with 1 Counter Blast. Refluke at 4 because you need to constantly send it to Soul so you can Soul Blast more of Dark Strain just in case your opponent won't let Fusada hit. And that 10k is really helpful to have. 4 Dark Strain because it can give things boost and that makes your rear guards hit for 30k swings. 4 Kokobiel if you're one of the people who like using Kokobiel because she adds extra guarding power. 3 Fusado because that's mainly what you can afford on the budget. But at the same time it's an on hit like pressure and you can't kill it. Uh, Fano, which is a two copies and double crit attacker, which is helpful. And then Agismire Dragon, which is the 4PG, which you do need to block like high numbers or another over trigger user. And speaking of over trigger, we want to run over trigger, and that's the one that can give your rear guards drive checks because why would you not? We have a total of seven crits, four Gurgant, three Dizma, four draws in Gallus because. You know, I do think you need the draws over the front because the rear guards hit for big enough numbers anyways and you do need to draw onto your grade 3s. It's not always a guarantee that you would see a grade 3. There have been times where I have seen more triggers than I've seen grade 3s in my hand and there have been times where I haven't been able to use 4 or Rook skill because of that. Granted, it only happened once but my point still stands. And then, you know, 4 heals of Arish. And then 3 Blitz Order of Hopeful Testudo as a 15k shield. And now what does the deck do in its final form? You are still great through everything. You get 4 attacks with big numbers forcing out 15 to 20k shields on average again. It's just the difference between this one and the other one is that the other one wasn't most likely to get the 15. This one is more likely to get it. There are still times where you won't get it though and you just gotta deal with it. And then it's still a rush deck because, you know, you gotta rush them out. The second you get to grade 3, go for it. Do not let them, do not hold back. Go for it. Push them down. The main units are Bastion, Knight of War, Fusado because you want that counter charge and soul charge. Broadaxe because he can give 10k to anyone except for Bastion, of course, unless it's on rear. Kokobiel because it can act as a garter. And Dark Strain because it can give everyone boost. So, yeah, those are your main units, basically. And here's what the images of the cards look like. Percentage-wise, at the very bottom, you see the ride deck. And the final price for this would be about $58.82. This is technically out of my budget because this would be $5 over with shipping. But I am lucky because shipping does not count towards my budget. So, fuck yeah. But still, if you have a problem with this budget, because like if you're in the same situation as me where your shipping is makes you go over budget... Get rid of a Fusado, you don't need that many, and then just put in another, uh, uh, the extra crit gainer or the on attack at plus five. It's one of your choice on there. And now on to Deed Start Deck 04, Megumi Orguru, Orgura Sylvan King. So here's what the deck basically focuses on. It is Magnolia, so its skill is at the end of the battle that it attacked, if it's on Van, Counterblast 1, give a unit plus 5, and it can attack from back row. 
And then if you can't tell what that is, it does this for you already. You get multi attacks out of your thing. Lattice, it's when it's rolled upon by Magnolia, you Soul Blast one, you look at top card and you call it if it's a unit and if it's not, it goes to hand. Cheris, you do technically the same thing when it's rolled up by Lattice, but you don't Soul Blast. You still look at the top card, you call it if it's a grade two or less unit, and if it's not a unit, it goes to Soul instead. So yeah, and then Lote is our standard card. And that's pretty much all we can talk about from the main deck, because that's the only things of importance. And what does the deck do? Like I said earlier, it's a multi-attack deck. You get four to six attacks in a turn with decent numbers. I wouldn't say they're big. Big is a very big overstatement. But they're small, they're like 10k drops, pretty good. And some of them are 5k's, but that still slowly adds up over time and eventually kills your opponent. This is a deck you want to rush with very early. Push them to high amounts of damage as possible as early, or if they don't take it, that means they're guarding a lot, and hopefully they just don't see triggers. Then you get to Magnolia, you go for more rush, and you should have full control of the game. Main unit wise, it's mainly Magnolia, Lattice, Cheris, and Lattice and Cheris get plus 5k each when they attack from the back row, or to be more exact, Cheris gets 5k when it's attacked from the back row, and Lattice, you can Soul Boss want to give it plus 10 when it attacks from the back row, and Duger, which is a Continuous if you have four or more other rear guards it gets plus 5k power. So if you have five rear guards basically it gets plus five So yeah What would you add and what would you remove for this deck? You would most likely add cards like Sylvan Horn Beast Ilio Which you can retire it and pick two units to get plus five making all your other rear guards hit for bigger numbers Which is very good and really helpful to have You could also run Sylvan Horn Beast Goon, Goon Nolslaw this card is the triple rare for this deck. It is the first and the only out of the and the first one out of the two decks that we have that you actually take the triple rare for. The other one being Seraph Snow, which we'll get to later. This one is when it if it's in the back row, when it attacks, counter blast one, and something gains this unit's power. So obviously you have to use Magnolia on in the first place, so it's a 15k swinger. Then you use its skill to get 15k to something else. And you can probably give it a trigger, you can probably use Mantis, which we'll get to later, which will give it more power. You just stack the thing with power and give it to something else. If you want to stay in budget, buy this at one. You do not need more than one. A lot of people that aren't budget players obviously run more than it because they need more of it to like make better plays. This deck does not necessarily need it. If you know what you're doing, if you feel comfortable playing around it, you don't need this card. In fact, if you don't even want to spend money on it, you can just get an extra copy of Alia or tech in a Duger or something. But if you want to get this extra card, you can. Uh, a Suit Noble Edgar is another card we can get, which is a grade three with Persona Ride. And when it attacks, Counter Blast one, it gets plus 5k power to end of battle. It's not the best thing, but you can use it in the case where you call it down to back row, you, like you rush with your back row, you Persona Ride with Magnolia because if you Persona Wrath Magnolia, you get to pick three units instead of one to give the 5k two in the back row attack. So you can Persona Wrath Magnolia, give plus 10k to front row, call down two units, call three of Edgar to the back row. Your Vanguard swing skill, Edgar gets plus 5k each of them, so they're already at 18, they swing for 23, so that's already 10k drop from the, 15k drop, sorry, from the back row for each attack, which is nice, followed by a decent amount of drop for the front row for cards that aren't really like people wouldn't run i have yet to see someone use astute noble edgar and if you're someone who uses it good on you but th that's a pretty good card to have. the only downside to it is like it's a counter blast card and in that case you can add cards like as tearing malice which allows you to retire two rear guards to counter charge one i don't imagine you would run tearing malice i have tried tearing malice and magnolia it's not necessarily a helpful well i want to say it's not helpful it's a card that I don't like using because sometimes, in cases, it's been known to make me minus more than plus, but at the same time, it's been known to make me plus more than minus. So there's always the 50-50 range on it. If you don't want to take the chance, don't run it. and just, Or if you do want to take the chance, run more draw triggers with it. I don't want to run more draw triggers. I like my lineup the way it is, so I'm not going to do that. Next up, we have Spurring Maiden Elena. So this, this is a really helpful card because it's an on place from hand. Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 1. Call a card from drop zone to rear and it gets plus 5k power. So, you know, you can't loop it, unfortunately, because otherwise that would be just counter blast 4, soul blast 4, call down 5 units for free, basically. But, nah, it's fine because you still get a unit out of it and you can soul blast the target. So, like, say you want to get Lattice or Cheris out of soul, soul blast it, and then call it back, 
gets plus five really helpful card for setup and a very helpful card for rushing i personally don't run it because i like to keep my stuff like within the archetype such as sylvan horn beast i like to only use sylvan horn beast cards if possible which is why my trigger lineups are normally far different than other people's but a it's still something i like to do if you don't like to do that that's fine on you just use elena with it Next up, we have Collision Mutant Adamantis, who, when it's placed, gets plus 5k to something. Doesn't matter if it's placed from hand or not, so you can combo with Elena, who gives it 5k, then you can use this thing skill to give something else 5k. And that's really helpful, because you can give it to Gun and Sola, and this thing's also really cheap, it's 25 cents a piece, so, you know, that's helpful to have. It just helps to have it, because it can give something more power, and that's normally the thing you'd swing with back row with. Next up, we have Planner Prevent Dragon, that is the PG for this deck. Next up we have Source Dragon Deity of Blessings, Bless Favor, my tied for second favorite over trigger, which is an everything trigger basically, or as many of my friends call it, an everything bagel. So as per usual, it gives a million to something when you damage or drive check it. You draw a card and you remove it from game. Then if you drove check it, you do the following. Draw another card. Give something a crit. Give your front row plus 10. And if you have more damage than your opponent or equal, heal one. This thing is a straight up everything trigger. You get the 1 million guaranteed, you get a draw guaranteed, and if you drive check it, you get a secondary draw, something gets a crit, something gets a front, and you get a possible heal out of it. This is straight up one of the best over triggers ever, and the only reason why I like the Dark Stage one more than I like it is one, because of the name, and two, because like I like the eternal pressure that it applies more than I like a once per turn thing, or like once per game, it only activates during that moment, but A, it's still good to have. Next up we have Abyss Invitation, just a standard crit. I don't like writing this crit, it's a Zorga card. And especially because it's a, like literally the Zorga art card. Like when you do the full alignment in terms of art, it lines up with Zorga. So I don't like running it for that, but uh, some people would. And the extra crit does add some pressure, I'll admit to that. So if you want to add it, you can. I personally wouldn't. Then we have Ghost Chase, which is when it, you use it, one of your units gets plus 5k power. So okay, it's a 5k shield, and you pick one of your units and you bounce it back to your hand. So you can constantly loop over Adamantus over and over and over again, and your opponent can't do anything to you to stop it. Once more, I don't personally run this in my Magnolia, Magnolia build, despite the fact I do have room for Mantis and this card. I just don't like running it because it feels more of a Zorga card. And Zorga does have cards now that can benefit off this, so thankfully I can run it at finally. But... Ghost Chase is still a very helpful card, despite the fact being only a 5k shield in the Blitz order. I say run it. What you would remove? Seizing Slash Mutant, Bruce Slash. This is a vanilla. Get rid of it immediately. Sylvan Horn Beast Duger, who is just, you know, the 5k power guy. He's good and all, but the fact that you have to have 5 rear guards to get him off is really bad. So, you replace him for anything. Looting Petal Stomalia. This is inherently a good card to some extent. Use Soul Blast and Counter Blast one to give it boost to end of turn. So it gets boost, but and it's a grade two, so it's a 10k booster. Just the problem is all other cards like have abilities that can give power to something else, which can be abused with Magnolia when you attack with back row from them. So having this card here isn't really the best card. It's okay for the trial deck, but remove it when you add upgrades. Knight of Friendship Cyrus, this thing deserves to go to hell. <laughs> Because this is my least favorite card. I like its art, I like its name, I hate its skill. <clears throat> its skill is Soul Blast 2, look at the top card, call it. Basically what Lattice does, but for an extra Soul Blast and much worse. This deck doesn't have Soul Charging capabilities. In fact, I, the, I think the only Soul Charger we actually have for uh, Stoica in general, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I feel like the only Soul Charger we actually have is Tearing Malice, where it's required you retire two. And honestly, that is better than this card. Don't use Ceres unless you are only stuck with a trial deck. Hopeful Maiden and Jarn on Jodria, that is the standard PG from the trial deck. Not a good PG. I suggest this, I mean, I suggest Planner over uh, this. But if you did want to get Gun and Sola as a secondary copy, you can get rid of two planters if i'm correct you can give it a two planters and you'll be able to afford another gunning sola so feel free to do that if you want to and then you obviously remove the start deck over trigger sylvan horn beast valum which is a front trigger you don't need it because you're mainly trying to pump up the back row and your front row rear guards tend to normally hit the uh other front row rear guards on your opponent's side and sometimes they'll swing at van that's normally where you give it your triggers too honestly and then call of 
of the Beast. <clears throat> Call to the Beast is a Blitz Order as well as Ghost Chase. It gives 5k power to a unit, and then if you have three or more units in your back row, it gets plus 15. So on one hand, you could have a 5k shield that bounces something back that can basically force out a 5k shield on your opponent's side, or you can have a card that is a guaranteed 5k shield as well, but it has a chance of being a 15k if you have three or more back row units. Except the problem with this is, decks like Nirvana can blow it up for with Arena, Eugene exists and it can blow it up, Barrel Magnus can just send stuff to Soul, which means you'll for to block these you'll have to constantly call it from hand. Prison's not necessarily as bad, but you'll still be wasting resources to get them out from prison to call the back row. So actually no, this is during your turns, yeah, never mind. These car Call of the Beast doesn't really do much here. Like honestly, Ghost Chase does better in like current meta. Like if we're talking even if we're talking just straight up trial deck meta, this doesn't do good against prison or nirvana. It just has to fight against itself, um Bastion or Bruce and a lot. And that's normally what you would remove for these, because it's not necessarily that good, but it's not that bad either. What the final deck list looks like, we got four Magnolias, three Lattice, because you don't really need that many of them in the main deck, but it's a 25k swinger, it's still helpful. Uh, we got four Cheris, we have one Lote because of the starter, three Alio, one Gunisula, like I said, you can get rid of two PGs to get another copy of it. Uh, one Edgar, I mean four Edgar, sorry, because you know that 18k slash 23k swing, that's honestly really helpful. It doesn't sound like a lot, but I promise you, once you use it, it'll actually a lot once you see it in action. Four copies of Spray Made in Elena because you know she can help you call stuff to rear. Add Mantis because it's a 5k booster to something, so four copies. Four copies of Planner because it's a PG and a good one at that. Uh, trigger wise, we have one blessed favor because it's an everything trigger. We run eight crit, sorry, seven crit, four draw because you do need those draws sometimes just in case you are playing against one of the nuke, nuke decks and you need the resources to constantly get your hand back. Or just in case like you're trying to see Gun and Sula or in case like you just need hand cards in general, that's what this is for because this is a rush deck. So four draw, seven crit, four heal, and Zatarog and then two ghost chase because I don't think you need too many of it to be good. And what does the deck do in its final form? It's still a multi-attack, you still get four to six attacks in a turn with small numbers, except the numbers are averagely more big. Like, they do force out more guard. From before where they would only, unless you just had a bunch of cherishes and lattices in the back row, it does force out more shield now, it forces out about 15k slash 10k sometimes if you're really lucky they'll hit 20ks so that's really good it's still a rush deck i say when you depending on what's in your hand start rushing at grade two no matter what if you can start rushing at grade two but if you can rush at grade one do it make them pay make them suffer make them know what they're in for make them aware so that they play it defensively because as a great man once said the greatest risk I mean, sorry, the greatest danger is playing it safe. If they start playing it safe, take advantage of it, rush their asses down. What the main units of this deck are, still Magnolia, Lattice, and Cheris, and followed by Elena because she can call stuff down, and Mantis because it can get 5k to something. And what the final price of the deck is, and what the cards look like, is 54.84, and for me this would be technically 59.84 because shipping is a bitch to me. But still, it fits under the $60 budget, which is good. In fact, the only one that goes over is Bastion, and that's it. And technically, that's just because I put another Fusato. I can easily just take that out and not hit the budget. So this deck is kind of... This deck is actually fun to play. I say out of all the decks I played with all the budgets, I have to say Nirvana was my favorite. It was the most comfortable feeling to me because I main Nirvana in real life, or I will main Nirvana in real life once my start deck comes and once my booster set arrives. So... I mean, Nirvana in real life, it feels comfortable playing it, and now I got to experience it before I actually touch the card. Seeing on today is D Star Deck 05 Tamari Seto Aurora Valkyrie. This was, uh, I think, one of the fan favorites for most of the time because one, Tamari was best girl, but two, I think it was supposed to be the hardest Star Deck to play. I remember seeing something about that. So, pretty much our cards here are Aurora Battle Princess Seraph Snow that we have to focus on, which, if for. If your opponent has one card in prison or more, it gets plus 10k power, so it's a 23k swinger on van. And if they have three or more, it be, gets triple drive, so that's really helpful. Result Pink is an on-place 
van, uh, you can pick a car from your, your opponent picks a car from their hand and puts it in your prison, and when it attacks it gets plus 2k power, so it's okay, if there's a card in the prison that is. And Kante Blue lets you search your deck for a prison when it's rolled on, when it's rolled on Vanguard, so it's a free basic search for your ace card, and when it's placed on rear, if there are one or more cards in the prison, counter boss one, soul boss one, a draw card. So I've been talking about prison for the for a while, so what does the trial deck do? It basically focuses on imprisoning your opponent's rear guards and slows down their play, and what I mean by that is prison basically takes your opponent's rear guards and just, yeah, puts them to prison. That's the basic way of saying it, and the only way they can get them out is by paying counter blast, soul blast, AK resources. And what happens during this is that your opponent pays so much resources that they have to be a lot smarter of how they use their skills because some decks you need to counter blast, some decks you need the soul blast. Like Bruce, I think Bruce has one of the better matchups against this because Bruce does not use that much counter blast. Even in non budget full out, it doesn't use that much counter blast. So you can always just use your counter blast to unimprison your rear guards while when. Uh, say for example Magnolia. Magnolia uses up a decent amount of counter blast. It uses up some soul blast. So Magnolia is probably like the worst matchup in my opinion against Prison. But it just meant to slow down your opponent's play while you gain power, triple drive, and resources and hope that you can, by the time your opponent can make a comeback, you can survive it. Uh, Seraph Snow's other skill, which I forgot to mention earlier, is an act vanguard or rear guard. The first grade three of the trial decks to have a vanguard or rear guard skill. And I really like that because like having a versatility like that, if you, cause the trial deck doesn't necessarily give you too many cards to hit the three in prison mark to get your triple drive, but that's really good because granted you're sacrificing a persona ride, but you'll at least get to call down another copy of Seraph Snow and get four rear guards in prison and easily hit the 10K with triple drive. So I really like that about Seraph Snow, but also it's, kind of the worst part about the deck because you get one attack with like relatively a 15k shield and that would be Seraph Snow because it's really easy to hit the 23k mark in prison one unit so unless your opponent has a bunch of resist units you're guaranteed to like hit that mark with the 15k guard but then you have otherwise relatively two small attacks unless you persona with that turn because like on average when I really think about it whenever I swing with my prison deck I normally get a 23k swing in Seraph Snow, a 15k swing from Grapple External, and a 21k swing from something else. So I'm never really hitting for big numbers besides Seraph Snow. So the deck doesn't do much in terms of power, but it is good at some extent to what it does being a control based deck slowing down the opponent's plays and force them to pay resources for it. I think when we talk about like set boosters in general, this deck has won the least amount, but also to it has the worst, I want to say, well not the worst, but like not the best entirely of like support wise. Like every other deck got pretty good support and I'm just kind of disappointed in Seraph Snow's support and I feel like they got shafted, but considering like we're already getting reveals from set two and currently those reveals are really good for prison, I say they're making it up in set two. And the main units for the trial deck wise are Seraph Snow obviously, Kainte Blue, who lets you search for your prison in the ride line and also get you a draw if there's cards in your prison. Security Patroller, who's an on hit, you and no, not an on hit, sorry, this is the wrong card. Security Patroller, who is an on place, soul boss one in prison a unit, so just one Seraph Snow and one that thing, and you can easily get three in prison. And Alert Guard Gunner, who is an on hit, but that's also a grade three, that lets you imprison two units if it does hit. What you, would you add and what would you remove for this set? I'd say add Grand Aroid Fair Tiger, which is a 13k base, Soul Blast 1, rear guard skill, imprison one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row, and if you do, it gets plus 2. Or like, it gets plus 2, then you imprison the rear guard. So good news is you still get the 15k base whenever, but it gets you an extra imprison. The only thing about this is it has to be in the front row, and I don't like that because that is actually part of the reason why Prison almost lost when I was doing the testing battles because Bruce just put a, I guess, put the game in checkmate to where either Prison couldn't do shit and they couldn't swing for big numbers, or they could swing for big numbers, but it would just allow Bruce to constantly do the same play over and over again, putting Bruce in a situation where once it didn't brick, it would be able to win the game, which is why I'm kind of against the front row thing, but it's still a good card nonetheless. Grapple External is just a continuous when it attacks. If you have one or more cards in the prison, it gets plus 5k power, so it's a 15k swing. That's good. You combine with an 8k booster, it's a 23k swing. Aurora Battle Prince is Agra Rouge. 
So this is the other triple rare for the set that you would actually get for this deck. And the reason for this is because it's cheap enough. I suggest only one. It is not necessarily my favorite triple rare. In fact, it's my least favorite. That one I'm fine with saying because it's an odd place in prison, which is okay. And then it gets like 5k power and 10k shield if there are two more units in prison. Except the thing is that 10k shield doesn't come in helpful if your opponent just takes out enough cards to where you don't have a two or more in prison. And then she just becomes a 5k shield normally and kind of just a weak card so having one copy of it is helpful i say even if you like do fully upgrade this deck i still say two solely because it is not good during your opponent's turn when it needs to be next up we have hyperspeed robo shovel stud he is i would like to say one of my favorites because for some reason every time i use galacticus which does force you to rest a unit when you use it and for some reason i always go second with prisons it's nice to, that he's always in my hand to rest him but his skill is counter blast one and soul blast one and you imprison any rear guard on your opponent's field so not just front row which is good and then if you have three or more cards in the prison you get to draw a card so that's really good he does take up two different costs at once which kind of is hurtful to your plays depending on how you're trying to play the game but he does get you a possible draw out of it and he can imprison anywhere like seraph snow does unlike Grand Fair. So I like him for that. Next up we have Violet Dragon RPG that has the if you have one or more card one or less cards in hand when you use it, you don't have to discard for it. Star Dragon DD of Infitude Eldo Breath, which is the over trigger. I like this card. I just don't think it's for prison. And I'll I'll explain that right now because it's still the one million and draw card, but its effect is you double the power and you double the critical of all the units in your front row time to turn. So that's good. So everyone's swinging for double crit unless they minus crit from something. And everyone's swinging for probably attacks in the 40s or at least in the 30s, depending on how you did it. The only problem I have with this is that prison, like I said, only the Vanguard actually hits for a big enough number for it to matter. While the other two, on average, I've seen just not hit that number on at all. So I could see why you'd want to keep like the... I guess cater not cater uh cray elemental over trigger because it gives one million to two units so that your other two rear guards are hitting for big numbers but at the same time auto breath is still something to consider because it at least pushes on crit pressure so even though the attacks are low they still have to guard them and that's what i like about auto breath if you want to keep the power with spiritual king you can but i prefer auto breath because of the critical pressure and finally cardinal draco barbie zode it is a critical trigger. I, like I said before, I would not shove this in because it's part of the Cardinal Droids or Cardinal DS family, and I don't like combining things together despite the fact this deck does have a variant with Orphis shoved into it, but I don't like doing that. You can if you want, but this is just mainly what you would do on average. What you would remove for this is stuff like Jordan Combination Julian. This was the 10K Vanilla. Get rid of this. We have no benefits from it. There should be no disregard for getting rid of it. Atomic Caution, this one is, it's hard to do this because it's a two, it's a 10k booster and a 10k shield if you have cards in prison, which is why it's helpful, and I honestly prefer this over Anger Rouge, but it feels weird having a one-off copy of a grade one. It doesn't feel weird having a one-off copy of a grade two for me for some reason, because I just, for some reason, think I'm Aichi playing Blaster Blade again, but... I feel weird having a one-off copy of a great one. I mean, if you want to put this in, I'd say get rid of one Anger Rouge and then one Shovel Stud, but I don't think it's worth it for being a 10k booster, but you can if you want. Then we have the Craggy Beast Gear Grand. This is just the regular PG. You can remove this if you want, or if you really want more Anger Rouges, you can get rid of two Violates and add an Anger Rouge for it, and then just put in two copies of this. You could do that. Personally, I wouldn't, but that's you. Spiritual King of Determination, Obari, the over trigger, like I said. If you want the more power over the crit pressure, go Obari. But if you want the crit pressure, go Eldo Breath. And finally, Oro about Princess Amy Roge. I mean, Orange. I don't know why I said Roge. This is the draw trigger, and this deck does not need draw triggers. This deck kind of decks out quickly if your opponent gives you what you want with your triple drive. If you're playing me, if you know you're playing me and you're playing prison, get rid of your draw triggers. I will stall you out. I will give you anything you want to get yourself at three cards in prison. I will stall you out to deck yourself out. So I suggest not running draw triggers in case, one, you come across people like that. 
but two, in case you actually start drive checking your draw triggers and you're losing more cards in deck. And <clears throat> what the final deck list will look like is about four Seraph Snow, one Resolve Pink, because it's not that useful outside of prison for, I mean, outside of Riot deck. For the record, I don't do this in my personal deck. I like to run it at four, not because it's a good card. I never said it was a good card. I'm saying it's a bad card right here, right now. But I like running it because it's an Aurora Battle Princess, and I don't like not having them, which is why in my personal build, I also run Anger Rouge at four, despite the fact I don't like the card. I do a lot of stupid things I don't like, and then I do a lot of things that I like, even though they're stupid, and that's normally how I build my decks, and somehow they work out for me. Anyways, four Seraph Snow, one Resort Pink, four Kayante Blue, because at least she has use outside of the Riot deck, one Ruby Red, which is your starter, four Grand Row Tiger, two Alert Guard Gunner, three Security Patroller, four Grapple External, one Angar Rouge, four Shovel Stud, four Violate Dragon, one Eldo Breath, one, I mean, sorry, four, seven Criticals, four Loris Yellow, and three Barbara's Zode, four Fronts and Front Rows, just to make sure that your Front Row can hit bigger numbers. Plus, like, if you see a Front Trigger and an Eldo Breath, you know, you're technically doubling the power of the Front Trigger, too. So, it's a good thing to have, especially since your front row doesn't really casually hit for big numbers. Yet, for some reason, I don't drive check fronts when I want to. I only damage check them. Aurora Battle Princess Tezri Gruy as our heal trigger. And two Galaxy Central Prison Galactus as a set order. I never really described what it does, but pretty much you place it on board. It's a grade one order that you search for with Kayente Blue. You rest a unit to activate it. If you're going first, just rest your Vanguard. If you're going second, call Shovel Stud, because if you're anything like me, he'll probably be in your opening hand. Uh, play the order, you soul charge three, and then the cards that you place in prison go here in the order zone with it, and when your opponent wants to unimprison their units, they either counterblast one to call two from the prison, or they soul blast one to call one from the prison. So it forces your opponent to get rid of resources. And what does the deck do in its final form? It does the same thing, more or less. It has the still imprison the opponent's rear guard to slow down their play, but in the final build, they still get, like, a 15k shield drop on Vanguard that never really changes, because I never call a unit to the back row Vanguard unless, like, I have the space to. I never do it otherwise, because I need the other rear guards to hit bigger numbers too, especially when they're just going to PG the Vanguard. Uh, then there's, like, on average, a 5k shield. If you throw down the card, if you throw down a booster, that's a 20, that's a 10k shield, and then one actual 10k. So, you know, if you play it right, or, like, you call down more cards... It's two 10k drops in a 15, or if you're going down all back row, it is two 10ks and a 20. I don't personally do that because I like to keep the momentum because, like it is, like I said before, it's a control based deck. So I like to take my opponent's resources, and I don't want to give them any sign of what I have in my hand. I want to keep them guessing because if they see stuff I have in my hand, they understand. Okay, they probably run so and so amount of this, and they probably use that card like this etc and then they know how to play around it so i like to keep them guessing i don't like to just throw down a bunch of random cards unless i am blatantly rushing you like in nirvana where i don't give two shits and i will kill you on a first grade one turn if i have the chance i mean it has yet to happen but i will try it and the what and the main units of the final deck are just regular seraph snow as usual kante blue security patroller who's just a non-place in prison grand road fair tiger who allows you to imprison something and shovel stud who also allows you to imprison something and possibly let you draw off it this is what the final deck should look like in terms of images wise and the final price of this deck is 54 60 or for me counting shipping that would be 59 60 so yeah and that was all of the things that we have to talk about today in terms of deck pro well not deck profiles but like but yeah, no, technically they are deck profiles of um, how to upgrade your Vanguard overdress budget. Or, sorry, let me rephrase that. How to upgrade your Vanguard overdress start deck on a budget. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was really helpful to, like, other budget players so, like, you can get in the mind of me. Because I used to be the king of budget, and I'm still the king of budget. I just do a lot less budget things nowadays when I'm online playing Vanguard because I won't use budget decks because I already have them in real life. So... I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this helped anyone else who is watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, donate to the Patreon. I have a Discord, so go join that. I have a Twitch channel. I will start streaming there. I promise. I keep saying it. It's going to happen. I promise you. I'm going to start streaming it soon. I got a Twitch channel, so go follow that. And 
All right, what is the other one? But yeah, I have a Beyblade channel as my second channel, so go subscribe to that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up. You're